Hello, everyone. I'm Suranjita Chaudhary, a technology marketing manager at Qualcomm. I know firsthand from all of my work here at Qualcomm just how crucial Spectrum is to the rapid, broad rollout of 5G and the continued evolution of 5G technology. Today, I have with me Qualcomm's very own Spectrum expert, Dean Brenner. Dean is the Senior Vice President of Spectrum Strategy and Technology Policies. And today is here with us to share what's happening around the globe. So Dean, the last time we spoke with you, it was in December when you gave us an update in our webinar. The Spectrum space evolved so rapidly. Can you tell us what's happening today? Uh, first of all, great to be with you, Saranjita, and welcome to everyone who's watching the 5G Summit. I'm sorry we can't be together in person. So back when 5G was on the drawing board, we said our vision for Spectrum was that we would use low, mid, and high band spectrum, licensed, unlicensed, and shared in order to attain this multi-gigabit, ultra-low latency, ultra-reliable communication, which was really the promise of 5G. And we are just executing on that vision and seeing uh, uh, Spectrum uh, be allocated, awarded, auctioned all around the world every single day. So just in the past two weeks, we saw millimeter wave spectrum auctions end in Australia, Denmark, and Slovenia. Uh, back in March, we saw uh, millimeter wave spectrum roll out in Japan by the, the operators in Japan. We're seeing continued um, build out in the United States. And so we're very happy with the way the execution of this vision is going uh, all around the world. Excellent. So there was a lot of excitement around the recently completed mid-band auction in the U.S. I was observing your updates and it almost felt like a marathon. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. And Spectrum auctions often are a marathon. In this case, that auction started in early December and ended in mid-February. And what's exciting about that one is the United States back in 2016 was the first country to allocate millimeter wave spectrum for 5G and allocate a lot of it. So the US has been a little bit ahead in, in millimeter wave, but maybe a little bit behind in the mid band. And this auction of 280 megahertz of prime mid band spectrum really fills in that, that gap. And a, a, another exciting aspect to it is the auction ended in, as I said, in mid February. And in mid-April, Verizon Wireless, who was the biggest winner of the auction, already announced that they were starting to deploy equipment using the spectrum, part of the spectrum that they won in the auction. So again, this is quite a tribute to the vision of low, mid, and high band spectrum, to the importance of spectrum for 5G. And it's a validation from Qual for Qualcomm of our strategy and our chips to support both sub-6 gigahertz and millimeter wave spectrum. So great segue into the millimeter wave. So, you know, I was curious to know what this auction really brings for the higher bands, like millimeter wave for US and global. So something about that. Please. So actually at Qualcomm, you don't have to take my word for it. We actually released the results of speed tests that users initiated on their smartphones. And what the speed tests show is that if you have millimeter wave spectrum and you're using it for 5G, the speed you get is 16 times faster than the speed you get on sub six gigahertz spectrum. Now we think both are very important. You obviously get much better coverage at sub six, but in millimeter wave, we've got these very wide swaths of spectrum. There's much more spectrum available and we have these uh, exciting advanced uh, antenna technologies that Qualcomm has developed. And so what we're seeing in the field with people, um, not, not peak speeds, not in labs, not at trade shows, but in the real world, people are getting tremendously faster broadband using millimeter wave. And in COVID, I don't, I don't think we ever have to explain to someone why they might want better connectivity. I think everyone in the world right now understands and wants and needs better connectivity and millimeter wave is absolutely executing on that vision. Absolutely. So let me shift the topic a little bit to private networks. I'm personally very excited to see the way 5G is beginning to roll out around the world in the industrial and the enterprise networks. 
But I know questions regarding which spectrum would be the best to use has come up oftentimes. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, thanks very much for asking that. I, I agree with you. We're excited about the potential of 5G, not just for phones, but for in, in industrial settings, um, in a factory, in a warehouse, in a port. And again, we're seeing that vision um, come into fruition. So for example, Verizon Wireless, a United States operator, announced that they're going to be operating a private network in the UK for the uh, operator of a UK port. Now, there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach to Spectrum for these private networks, industrial, IoT, vertical use cases, which are called different things in different regions. But and that really validates, again, our approach at Qualcomm, because it's clear around the world there's going to be both sub-6 gigahertz and millimeter wave that's going to be used for this purpose. In Europe, in Germany, they were really the leaders in using the 26 gigahertz band and allocating it such that just, you know, if you just wanted to have the spectrum at a factory or at a warehouse, you could get spectrum just in the boundary, just uh, covering uh, that property. But on the other hand, in other regions around the world, there are other approaches. In the United States, we haven't allocated a specific band for these kind of applications, but it's a big aspect of what we're uh, starting to see enabled in the CBRS band, which of course is sub six gigahertz spectrum. So Dean, again, taking a slight shift on our conversation, we, I know we have talked about this in the past, that how passionate you are about closing the digital divide and bringing broadband to everyone, especially students and teachers. It's an issue you have worked on for years. And the American Rescue Plan uh, includes an emergency connectivity fund for schools and libraries. Can you tell us more about that? Oh, thanks so much for asking about that, Saranjita. It's been a huge priority for us at Qualcomm for quite a long time. Before COVID, there are approximately 15 to 16 million K through 12 students, kids who either lacked uh, connectivity, lacked a device or both. Now that was a problem before COVID, but during COVID, there was just no way for those kids to, to continue their education with thousands and thousands of schools closed. So uh, in the early days of COVID, we uh, ramped up our effort to encourage the U.S. government to allocate specific money, dedicated federal funding on an emergency basis for this purpose. And we're very glad to see that that passed the U.S. Congress. And we're glad to see the FCC roll out the rules for the program. We're very excited about it. And the opportunity even to make it a permanent program down the road is very, very important. Again, we don't have to explain to a parent why their kids need a device and connectivity. Everyone understands that now. Even as schools open up, remote education is now, for the foreseeable future, going to be still a part of the educational experience for most K-12 through students in the United States. Now, there are many different kinds of devices that kids could use uh, to connect to their remote education. Obviously, laptops, especially laptops that have the cellular connectivity built right in using uh, technology that we developed at Qualcomm, we think is tailor-made, but also tablets, also hotspots, uh, MiFi type units. But in short, we're seeing a huge commitment from the United States government, from the president of the United States, the chairman of the FC, chairwoman of the FCC, to ending this digital divide once and for all, especially for K through 12 students. Great insight. So with this, we finally come to the last question today. And I would like to know as Qualcomm's global spectrum strategy and technology policy leader, what's your focus area for 2021 and the years ahead? So I think my focus area, uh, Saranjita, and ours at Qualcomm are actually the areas that we've discussed. So we want to see millimeter wave roll out everywhere because it's now proven to provide such great uh, connectivity. That's one big focus area. There's still parts of the world where we need to see millimeter wave roll out. A, a second, though, is in this digital divide space, fixed wireless is a very important aspect of 5G. We recently had this amazing announcement that we can get a one deliver one gigabit per second using Qualcomm technology and Qualcomm advanced antenna modules 
uh, for a di- at a distance of s- over seven kilometers, so over four miles away, to fixed locations such as schools, medical centers, hospitals, long-term care facilities, libraries, all the kinds of places in rural areas that lack connectivity. That'll be a big part of closing the digital divide. So that'll be a big focus area. And then this industrial internet, this vertical use cases, private networks, that will also continue to be a a big focus area because again, it's such a big part of the potential for 5G to deliver much better, much more reliable, much faster communication. Wonderful. Thank you, Dean, for a really insightful conversation today. I know we are all excited to see what's next. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. If you'd like to have a background on the updates Dean has shared today, check out our webinar from December. The QR code will be available on your screen right after. Once again, thank you and stay safe. Thank mm-hmm. you.